and welcome to Festival Speaks. Today is the Ides of March. And uh, yeah, I may be Beth, also known as the Fat Squirrel on Ravelry, and the Fat SQRRL on Instagram. How are you? I hope you're doing well. Take a minute, just. That's what I'm doing because. Life, right? I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Um. I have lots to talk with you about today. Like it is all crafty all the time. I feel like I was feeling a little bit like I had one of those like unfinished things were kind of stressing me out. So I was trying to finish some stuff and like it actually kind of looks like I did that. <laughs> Imagine when you actually work on some things to try to finish them sometimes. Now, I'm not saying all the time. Your, your mileage may vary, but sometimes they actually got finished. What? And that finishing is not necessary. I don't care if you have one gabillion whips, but it was actually just stressing me out. Like it's like your stash, right? Like size of your stash is totally up to you. If three skeins of yarn hanging out stresses you out, then try not to have three skeins of yarn. But if 300 skeins of yarn doesn't stress you out, fine too. So it was just really just that it was kind of like stressing me out. I feel like I had so many ends unraveled and they were really just, every time I would see a project, I would just be like, ah, oh. right? Like it's that whole thing, right? Where I didn't understand this. Like I never understood why the clutter in my own house didn't st like stresses me out. But like, if I go to your house, your clutter doesn't stress me out, right? Like I don't care. Like I am down with whatever you've got going on but the clutter in my house stresses me out now that is not to say that there that means that i am productive and then like there is no clutter in my house because that's not the case i just like to really just be stressed out all the time about it okay okay but then i read this article that was all about like how when you see like for some folks I'll just put it in the eye. When I see clutter in my house, it attaches to things I need to do, right? It either attaches to something I did or maybe a choice that I made was that was not the best. Like maybe I bought something that I really didn't need. Um, like all of these like other strands are attached to it and then those strands get into your brain and then they, they turn into wire and then they just poke you whenever you see the image because an electric or see the thing because an electrical current then zaps into your brain and you're just like <laughs> but your stuff doesn't do that to me because I'm not responsible for it but anyway so I was having the like crafty make I'm just looking over here being like oh gosh it's really there's too much <laughs> don't look over there <laughs> you're like a divider I tell you that's the one bad thing about like we don't necessarily have what's called open plan living because I feel like that's, well, that's definitely not what we have. Like that's a more modern-y concept. Like I, maybe it's not a more modern concept because also like, hi, in the medieval times, it was open plan because like you had an open hearth and your cows were hanging out and your pigs, like everybody was, it was open plan all the way. But, um, but we do have like a four square, a four square. So like there are big open doorways between all of the rooms or to most of the rooms and so the downstairs rooms and so it is very easy to be like oh there's all this stuff that's stressing me out <laughs> don't look over there i can see the beauty even though i really love an open i love the ability to like have the spaces transition into each other and like I love the idea of that but having a business in one of those spaces or in fact all of those spaces at this point the kitchen is pretty free but <laughs> she's okay but every other place uh is that like ah it's always there so anyway that's not what we're here to talk about but since you came over to visit and you're like in the space with me I just thought I would just break it down a little bit for you so Thanks. Um, yeah, let's talk about some stuff. Um, administration over in the Patreon group. We are doing a read along. I think we talked about it. Um, so that is happening. It's our first ever book club. What? Um, so that's happening. If you are a patron of the podcast and you haven't checked your emails in a while, just like pop over to see. You might have also won a prize. I don't know. Just saying. Check it out. Um, 
And then in other administrative news, there will be a shop update March 22nd. I did move it. It was supposed to actually be today, um, but I was feeling very overwhelmed. And so I just bumped it to March 22nd. I hope, I, well, I appreciate you understanding. And so let me just show you what's going to be in it. And I'll put a pine stamp in if you don't want to watch. Um, so this is going to be an update that is all, well, it's mostly um, quilters cottons and it's all Ray Ritchie. Ray Ritchie, I love her design, her surface design so much. And so I had been saving these because they had more of like a springy summery vibe to me. So I had been just like being like, in a minute I'm going to get to do those. So yay, thanks. Um, I have all of my sizes. So first is sock, right? So this is a little sock plus bag. It's great for just accessories, one skein guys. Um, and it has these cute bee scaps. Do you love them? Gosh, I love a bee scap so much. And then inside was a kind of a hard decision to tell which was going to be the inside and which would be outside. But inside you have handsome little hedgehogs doing gardening chores. Some of them are watering. Some of them are eating honey. It's very sweet and precious. So that's a sock plus size. And then large wedge. These, the rest of these are interfaced with like um, a quilter's batting. So they're, they're kind of like a soft, they have a really nice texture to them. Uh, so this is great for two, three skein projects. And the rest of these will all just have the unbleached cotton interiors. And isn't that just the best floral? I mean, I love these guys right here. What are they doing? I'm going to show you the coordinating ones first. Okay. There's like two groupings. And then in the sweater and Aaron sweater size. Oh my gosh. It's bringing it all together. You got the cats, you got the bunnies. They're gardening. This cat takes sun safety very seriously. Right? The bunny also. Although he's got his, they're both, they've actually both, I just realized they both have their like little bee netting on. Not sure how much it's gonna do you because you're not even dealing with the bees in those pictures, but whatever, it's hecka charming. Right, is that not like, and this greenhouse, shut up. It's even got a little weather vane on it and then their, their little hedgehog friend reappears. Anyway, it's just such a great print. So I have that in sweater size and then the big gal, Aaron sweater. Great for sweaters, great for big sweaters. You can see if you want to see the comparison. It doesn't, the Aaron sweater doesn't look so much bigger, but it's partly because it has a very fat bottom. Like she has got a gusset. Okay. She's going to hold all the things. Okay. And then, I don't want to play favorites because they're very different. But then we have some woodland wonky, like some woodland frolicking. Uh, and there's mushrooms involved. Oh, shut up. Right. These like super wonky mushrooms of goodness. There's definitely a little rat wearing mushroom hat. His friend the squirrel is wearing a mushroom hat. They have foraging bags. It is a story to be told. And these have, because it's a lighter background fabric, these have a, um, sand washed canvas bottom which is like this great green and it is such a good texture these were these are great textural bags for me like i've just enjoyed the textures of them so much the washed quilters cotton um i can't remember now which fabric house puts out ray ritchie's stuff but i do like their base quite a lot it's a really nice it's definitely not brushed, but it has a good texture to it. Like sometimes the art gallery ones are kind of like slickery and like they're, I think they're good for garments. Okay. But like this one has a nice, like a little bit of toothiness to it. It's really lovely. And so I have that one in both sweater and Aaron sweater size. Shut up. Right. Isn't it just so stinking cute? Look at this little weed. Is this weed not the most charming? Look at him. 
Look at him. Oh, so cute. And then also, since some of you were, let me put these gals together. So again, that's March 22nd, 9 p.m. Eastern, fatsquirrelfibers.com. Okay, another secret. I'm going to try to switch my provider, like my hosting service. So if you have like the old big cartel, um, uh, well, it's not, it's not old, it's still current. But if you have like the big cartel address saved, you might be like, where are the bags? Just go to fatsquirrelfibers.com. Okay, that's where fiber stack come. Uh, if I have changed over, then it'll redirect. It'll be it'll be just happy if you go there. And even uh, if not, then it'll still be the right place. Either way. Right. Uh, and so then some of you really loved the frog and toad thing I did in screen printing class. So I'm going to have some of those too. Uh, so these are little guys. I am hand screen printing them. They will be imperfect. And that's just so you know that they're hand done. If you wanted them to be fancy and glossy, you would go to like one of those big fancy glossy places. No, we're we're down home. We're bee skeps. We're screen printing frog and toad. Oh man, I need to screen print some bee skeps. I have many ideas. I want to do like zine style fat things screen printed. Just saying. Uh, but these guys. I'm going to have a run of them, right? And like you can see, they're imperfect, right? There's like a little blip here. There's a little place here where there's a little bit of ink on this because actually what happened is I had to redo my screen. Something happened with the emulsion and like the abrasion of the like uh, places where the handles are sewn in, like totally deteriorated the screen. And I was screen printing and I was like, wait, what? How did that get ink there? Like, because I'm pretty klutzy. Like I was like, oh, well, it must have just like... And then I screen printed another one and I was like, wait, it was like really breaking down the emulsion. It was just, it was just like a weird, I think maybe the person before me who got the emulsion out just didn't stir it. It's like a very fancy chemical thing that happens. I'm just saying. And I think maybe they were like as diligent. I'm hoping that's what it was. <laughs> um, so I've redone my screen. I'm going to print some more for you. But so those guys will be, uh, yeah, also in March 22nd. If I happen to sell out of them, then I'll do another run. So um, just keep your eye out. If I if I run out of them on March 22nd, I'll do a number, a number? I'll do, an, I'll try to do another run April 1st. No fools, just frog and toad. Right, I mean, they're pretty cute. I mean, they're dressing so fly, right? So anyway, so that's happening. If you're on Instagram and you saw my neons and neutral screen printing, <gasps> shut up, right? Like I have this like super rustic linen canvas. It's hundred percent linen. And I am screen printing this like super hot pink on it. I love it. I love it so much. Uh, get ready to see more. I hope you like it. Um, but these are not going to be in this update because I needed to order, um, a custom zipper. I think I really felt like I needed a zipper and I hope it's going to match this screen printing ink. I'm hoping fingers crossed, or at least the closest I could get. Um, uh, but they will be rustic canvas and then they'll have the waxed canvas bottom. So I've got, I've cut them all out. So I was just like, I'm just going to put a, another zipper in there just to see what it looks like. And I was like, no, that's right. Um, cause I really just split the fancy zipper. I'm really excited about them. So there's definitely going to be more hot pink ink. And it's not even hot pink. It's like actually fluorescent. Like it is great. And it's actually like a, it's almost like a hot coral. Because it's a little bit, I don't know, I can't explain it, but I really dig it. Okay. I'm trying to stop myself from just like screen printing an entire wardrobe of clothing with like linen and hot coral. But maybe I won't stop myself. I don't know. Okay, so that is like, okay, so that's uh, March 22nd, 9 p.m., Fat Squirrel Fibers, Eastern Time, etc., etc. And then, what else? I think that's all the administrativeness. 
So let's just get into it. I have not had a lot of shenanigans because I've been crafting more. Um, I've been, I took a hike with my buddy. Oh my gosh. We went to Raven's Run, which is a nature center in Lexington, outside Lexington, Kentucky. And by the way, before the internet, I don't know how anybody, anybody would have known about this place. It's like one of those places that is only 10 minutes, 15 minutes, maybe. It's, I guess it's 15 minutes from the city, but you're like, where am I? And where are all the murderers that are going to get me? It's like, and even better. Okay. So by the way, also driving in like Lexington is so weird. I do not understand Lexington at all. Lexington, Kentucky, y'all. It is the, it has always been a weird city to me. Like I do not get the urban planning of what is happening there. I don't understand their like road system there. I know I am. I was actually even born in Lexington. It is not in me. I don't, I don't understand what's happening. Like I can get into Lexington, but can never get out of it. Um, it is just a weird O city, right? Like you'll be like, again, five minutes from 10 minutes from downtown, but then you're like basically in a horse farm but then also like this, the place that I went was like, you could tell it had been like horse farms traditionally and was still a lot of it was horse farm. I say horse farm. It has black split fit, like black, wo black wooden fences, which just means horse farms in Kentucky. I don't actually know. But you can tell like it's that, but then like people have sold off parts of it to be developed or whatever, or just whatever to like pay for the horses that year. So there are these crazy giant houses. I mean, banana pants giant houses there was one that I actually really loved that was like a super modern like it looked like it could have been underground but I I couldn't tell because hello they're fancy and rich and like I don't get to see their whole house but it was gorgeous it was black it was so pretty Why do I, I mean I am very lover of the trends sorry but gosh the black houses I don't want to have the upkeep like I'm not painting my house black because like I'm pretty sure I can't get away with not painting it for 30 years. <laughs> but gosh, they are so yummy. So I was driving through these beautiful, crazy houses. I mean, part of me is like, oh, that's beautiful. And part of me is like, what? You know, it's like alternate. <laughs> I can't afford health insurance. How does this people? You know, so I go back and forth, you know, the, the constant push and pull of life. Um, but so we're going to the nature called Raven's Rod. And wouldn't you know it, as soon as I like get ready to make the turn into the place, Ravens, just like a whole, like four or five of them just like hanging out, like they're getting paid. I'm like, did they like put like special Raven food down for these guys? Like, how do they know to like hang out? I've not seen any on the way here. Like what's happening? But it was lovely. It was very surprising. I sometimes forget that Kentucky is so stinking beautiful because I am from Indiana, the land of flatness. And like, we have some pretty stuff. Don't get me wrong. Like there's some nice, okay, there's some nice stuff. Mostly in that like I can afford to live here. That's real nice. Um, but like in this like really compact area, like it's not that, nature is not that big. But there's this like insanely beautiful like river outlook, which has all these signs around it, like warning death, you know, like apparently people like fall there every year. I got kind of like, cause there's like no guardrail system at all. It's just like a rock that juts out and then you could literally just, and I'm having nothing to do with that. I got like, <laughs> I was like, I can see everything from here. I'm cool. Um, luckily my buddy is also not a daredevil, so we were fine. <laughs> These like young kids, they were like in their teens. They got there somehow on their own. Uh, they came in like as we were like hanging out and they went out onto the edge of it. And I was just like, I think I have to go. <laughs> they were not being like silly. They weren't like messing around or being dangerous. But I was still just like, oh, this is making me too uncomfortable. <laughs> um, but then there was like this beautiful, like we turned this one corner as we were like heading back and like, there was this beautiful just like rock wall on either side. So you like, and then there was like just moss and like just this like super lush moss and like mossy like things and lichens and like little beautiful wildflowers starting to like be like, is it time? Is it time? And you're like, no, go back. It's not time. But they're just like kind of like hanging off. Oh, so gorgeous. 
And then there was like, we turned, and then we went around this other, I didn't even know that I was supposed to be looking over there. Just happened to look over there. Cause quite frankly, a lot of times I'm looking at my feet because I'm just not that coordinated y'all. You know, it's very, I look over, there's just like this insanely gorgeous waterfall. that's far enough away that I can't hear it. So I didn't like know to look, but it's just like gorgeous and like hanging out there with no like sign, like, Hey, pretty thing over here. I was like very thankful that the universe just allowed me to see it. It was gorgeous. Stinking A. What's going on, Kentucky? Anyway, so that was so, but I haven't had a lot of other shenanigans, right? I don't think so. None at all. But I've tried been doing, I've been trying to sleep a lot. I've not been trying. I don't know. I've just been like, nope, I'm good. I'll sleep like 10 hours tonight. <laughs> really working on my sleep health. That is just so nice. It's like the perfect sleeping temperature. And I'm just like, hmm, maybe I'll just stay here for another minute. Oops, that's an hour. <laughs> I can't help it, it's lovely. But I have been sewing a little bit. So, this you. Um, I am making, I have just finished the quilting part. I have a new quilt for my little coffee table. Cause like I had a Christmas one and then I was like, oh, I have like, I have a couple of fabric tablecloths, but I was like, hmm, yeah, maybe I should try to make something. So anyway, so I made this guy actually first, I made this guy. I was like trying to be like, no, I'll just make something really like more simple with like solids. And so I made this guy, which I do like, but also I don't. <laughs> So, right, like I made this, I was like, oh, it'll be great. I'll do some like big stitch quilting on it. It'll be super rad, right? And then I'm just like, oh God, I hate that. <laughs> <laughs> so true. The making life, man. So I, I, I'm fold, I folded this up. I'm folding this up and I'm just going to put it aside. I think maybe I was trying to get something that was sort of like neutrally because really what I want to draw, like what I want to sew is like super bright, crazy stuff right now. I want to make, oh, I'll show it to you. I'll be right back. So what I really want to sew is like fun, bright things. Um, like I did this little sample of a, um, it's called an economy block and I did it with foundation paper. And I was like, yes, like I want to do something that's all bright and fun. And then, and so I was like, oh, I'm going to do economy blocks. And then I was like, because I want to do one for my bed. Um, and then I looked at how many, how many blocks I was needing. And I was like, oh, that's a little off putting. <laughs> Basically, I need like these are six inch blocks. And like you can put sashing on them. And like theoretically, like I even love it when people do. Um, almost like this as like a giant log cabin and just put like a couple bars around it as sashing. I think that's really sweet. Um, but also I have found the hodgepodge quilt, which is a pattern by Modernly Morgan. And so here it is just like drawing, like a drawing of it. So you can kind of get an idea. Wow. Wow. Maybe not. It's really lovely and it's super bright and like that just seems really nice. Oh my gosh, Instagram. Just stop trying to show me cute stuff. My Instagram is just like cute. I'll just tell you, it. it's cute sweaters. It's a fat lady doing aerobics, leading an aerobics class. Um, yeah, that's basically it. And some wood carvings. Sometimes, I mean, you can really work on your feed to make it show you what you want to see. Just saying. Um, mine doesn't always work though. <laughs> Lots of times it's showing me things where I'm like, stop. And especially the stupid reels. Gosh, they're just such click candy. Stop it, Instagram. I know you're literally doing it. And then I'm feeding into it because I am, you know, that it's like the drugs. And so I click on it because I'm just like, what? is that? I 
love-hate relationship, I tell you what. Okay, well, here's one that's like Christmassy, but you get the idea. Like, oh, mm, how cute is that? Right? It is very charming. This is, cra uh, this is quilted by Craftaholic AT. I don't know, but that's just so cute. And like, look at this one in solids. <gasps> right? Where they do like a tonal with a star. Also, super charming. <sighs> anyway, so I've been like, that's what I really want to make. But also I don't think, I think my, well, you know what? I don't know why I even care. <laughs> I just make it anyway. Why do I care? I don't care. I'll just make it anyway. Maybe I'll make the economy book block one for downstairs and then I'll make a fun one for my bed. That's what I should do. Just need to get sassier sometimes. But I did make this one and I do think this one is quite charming. Um, so this is just four inch squares. So they finish at three and a half inches and then you just like lay them out in these crosses. Isn't that fun and cute? Right? So you don't need a quilt pattern. You just put it together. Okay. And then for the quilting, I just did a quarter inch on either side of the seam lines. So it just kind of, yeah, it just kind of re, it just kind of accentuates the, the shape of the block itself, which I find very charming. And then it has this little cute acorn background. This is cotton and steel. And let's see, this is cotton and steel. I have had this for several years. Um, And it's called In the Woods. And I, oh no, that's probably, and I guess this is the designer. I don't know, I'm sorry. But anyway, these are all just like, oh, except for this, the like little, um, like woven. It's like, this is like a, um, so you can see it's kind of fun. It's like a stitched woven. And there's like a little kind of chambray-y one. And those are all from my mama who gave me a beautiful package of wovens, half yard wovens for Christmas. So yeah, there's that. So I just need to put on the binding and then I'll wash it up and I'll show you the crinkly goodness next time. And then let's talk about spinning. What? They're spinning. Okay, let me have a drink. Just water. I say just. Uh, amazing water. Thank you for the gift of water. Um, I finished this guy. So this was a combination of a braid from Nest and then a bat from Knit Spin Farm. And basically I just like alternated them. Like I tore the bra like, kind of split the bat up into two split the braid into two and then just kind of like put them into like little nuggets and just like randomly I say random but not totally random because if I did like three bats and hadn't gotten a, a braid yet I was gonna go for the braid so it just kind of alternated ish uh, between bat and braid and then as a two ply I just plied them together and this was done over started this before SSK last year. So I started this probably in July last year and I just finished it. So um, it's even a little bit more wonky than my normal spinning. <laughs> it's a little bit all over there, but it's still kind of cool looking, right? Ish. <laughs> Uh, I have about 500 yards, so it's probably about a DK um, sport to worsted in places. That's kind of my kind of default spinning. And then I also finished my Knit Spin Farm Bat Vent, right? So the theme this year was Ice Castles, and I finished all of it finally. <laughs> I had finished all of it, but like the last four or five days. And then just did it for a long time. I, but I did spindle spin all of my bats. I did not did not use the wheel for any of it. But I spindle spun my bats and then plied it with a skein of mohair silk. I mean, with a strand of mohair silk. 
So they're especially fluffy and fuzzy and just like really fun. And I, I used just like several colors of mohair silk that I had in stash. I did buy like this minty color one because that is not a color I would have had. Um, but like, I'm sure if I actually looked at the price tag of having used mohair silk as a ply, I would be appalled with myself, but it was already in stash. And I just bought like one or two extra skeins. So Like I can still remember looking when I was like a newer knitter, not newer because it was already when we had the internet. When I was a, like I learned to knit in like the year 2000 or 1996, sorry. I learned to knit in 1996. And then I like knit like a little, I knit a lot in college and then a little bit after college, but then I took a big break. Um, and so when I came back to knitting, um, after my kiddo was like two or three and like there was it was not Instagram yet, but social media was starting to become a thing. I would see people's Noro blankets and just be like, that is like a $500 blanket. Like what the stink or more than that, who knows, right? Um, I was like, who pays that much for a blanket? And it was because I had not to, up to that point, I had never been a person who had stashed. Like I had never just accumulated a, a skein of something here or there. If I had extra from a project, I just immediately got rid of it. Um, and so I didn't understand like how that can happen. And so there we go right here. <laughs> I mean, I don't, I use like the knit picks or the, um, yarn webs, Southampton. Um, I can't, no, I can't, Valley yarn, right? I don't know, whatever. Um, but, <laughs> but all of that is like really fun to have just like a big floofy thing. So I have no idea. This may never be anything. It may only ever be this. I don't know. It's very pleasant as this thing though, right? How cute is that? So yeah. There's that. So that's the spinning and the knitting. Oh my goodness, right y'all. So I finally finished. <laughs> I made this um, wrap, this stole um, in it's been, I can't, I don't even know how long ago I started it. Uh, but this is based on the brain freeze pattern by Ash, Susan Ashcroft. Is that right? I think that's right. And it's freeze like F R I E Z E. If you're curious brain F R I E Z E. Um, and so what you do is you alternate between like, you never have a purely background color. They flip back and forth. So one will be the background, but then in the next section, it'll be the foreground and it's lots of slip stitches. And I, it turned out so gorgeous, right? So this is yarn from Wabash Woolens. And then it's one of those tubular yarns, um, which I will put the name in here. It's over there. Um, and so what I did is I ended up, cause it was, it was curling. And this is, again, this is not, Brain Freeze is a cowl. And then there's also a shawl based off brain freeze. Uh, but it was rolling um, because it is stock, primarily stockinette based. It was rolling. So what I did was I went around the edge with single crochet. I tried to do it with garter and this yarn is like a super long color changer. And I did not like how the pearl bump loops looked with the color change with this yarn. It just was too distracting. So I decided to do it with single crochet instead. And that helped it's, you know, I, I did just hit it with steam to kind of flatten it out a little bit more. And then what I did is this was for somebody who wanted it to have pockets, like to have a pockety thing going on. And so I basically just folded the yarn, like folded the stole, excuse me, in on itself, so in half, but like in the, you know what I mean? And then I just used the single crochet again to go along the bottom to join those up and used a slip stitch to join the edges. So a single, like it's not a single crochet cause it's literally just a slip stitch, but a slip stitch to join those two edges together so that when you wear it, you can have pockets, right? 
for snacks or hands or whatever. Probably not for puppies. It would be too, the puppy would be too heavy. Um, but for, you know, for this. So yay, that is a finny. That is finished, hooray. And so it was really just, I mean, I really loved the color. I, I love the colors. I loved the yarn. Um, it was just, I should know better than to try to knit a giant rectangle um, because that is not something I'm great at. And then to add to that slip stitches is like just, I should have known better. <laughs> I, I, did, I shouldn't, I shouldn't say that. I just should have known it was going to take me a little bit longer than I, than something equivalent would normally take me. Um, because like something about doing shorter rows back and forth over and over again is very hard for me to keep momentum on. Um, and so then you add slip stitches. And so even though this yarn, I think is considered a bulky, if not, I mean, I think it's a bulky. Um, so even though like I wasn't knitting super tiny and even though the knitting itself was pleasant, it wasn't like at an unpleasant gauge or anything. It was just, you know, slip stitches. And this, this, this stitch pattern is a lot of slip stitches. It is a load of slip stitches. Um, but it does, it did turn out really, I mean, look at that. That's gorgeous. be a beautiful sweater wouldn't it gosh wouldn't that be gorgeous oh. so anyway so there's that and then I'm trying to go like what's oldest to newest <laughs> I guess this is oldest. and so then I finished my Stephen West Aurora cabin shawl whoa I can't remember that this ring wants to catch on stuff oopsie um, yes, right. So we did a little, we had a little discussion last time about the pattern as written has a scalloped edge. Is scalloped even the right word? Chevron edge? Because scallops applies, it has lots of triangles next to each other edge. <laughs> um, and I just, and I had said that I was kind of running low on one of the colors for that edge. And I had thought, oh, I don't think I'm going to have enough to do that. Maybe I will just end after this section with the I-cord bind off. And then I realized I was wrong and I actually did have more of that yarn. But in the meantime, I think I had already decided, like, I love the way the chevron border looks on everybody's shawls. I think it's gorgeous. It's just not quite as me. Like it feels a little bit more, a little bit more. I, and I am a lot, don't get me wrong, but just I'm not a lot in that direction. <laughs> I don't know, man. <laughs> I, I like the way it looks on other people's shows, but I, on other people's projects, but I know that it's just not my jam. Like, to, like it feels a little bit too like fringy when I wear it. It's too fringy for me. Um, so, and I decided to go ahead and just end it there and put the I cord on it. And I'm glad I did in terms of, I had like this much of my I cord yarn left. Like, I, it was close. <laughs> and I really do like it. I mean, it's still a great, big, beautiful shawl. You know, it's a five skein shawl. And so while I omitted the border, I think it's like a four and a quarter skein shawl. So it's still plenty big. Um, and I really, and so this has slip stitches, right? Like all of these guys inv involve slip stitches, uh, but not nearly, like it's, the brain freeze has the slip stitches like almost every other row. And whereas this is just a few, and it's like a lot of the stitches are slipped. Whereas here, it's just these like awesome carrying colors are slipped. So it just, this is different. I don't know, man, but I'm very pleased with it. Yay! So these are just all yarns I had in stash and I had originally bought, um, I had originally bought th the blue, which is a Madeline Tosh, um, Tosh light and this, cr this clay or clay color. 
which is Tosh Sock, I think, and then the cream color, which is also Tosh Sock. I had originally purchased those to make like a bluebird inspired project for my mamma before she passed away. Um, and it just never quite came together. I had tried a couple of different things and I just, I don't know, it just didn't quite, it just didn't come together. So I had had those in stash for quite a while. Um, my mamma passed away a while ago. Um, but it seemed like a great foundation for this project, which was a five skein project. So I added in this another crafty girl, which is a, like a, a more really technically more of a bluebird color, even though like, like gosh, bluebirds, stop being so sassy with your bright colors. It's a little much. Um, <laughs> and then really the, the fox, which is the orange color, which is a Quids and Company finch. Um, it is finch, right? Whatever. It's their fingering weight wool one, not the one with silk in it. Um, they just kind of felt like they kind of accompanied it nicely um, and, and completed the look. It is really, like, I really think it's lovely. And this was, I mean, Stephen, West pro, Stephen West's designs for me are always just wonderful to knit. I can't say enough good things about them. Um, yeah, I just really dig them. So yeah, I'm very pleased with how it turned out. Um, and then I have, oh, so I guess I could, I, do, I did particularly keep my yarn so that you could tell. So this is what I had left. I mean, I told you I had like, you know, like less than a foot of the Quince and Company, the, the orange, which is Fox. I had, and it was Finch, yes. I had this much of, of the Tosh sock left in whatever, it's like parchment or something, I don't know. I did have quite a bit of my color, which would have been my color B. Um, a was this guy. B was this, which is Tosh Sock Brick Dust. And then C was the Quince and Company Finch. D was this Tosh Merino Light and Dr. Zhivago's Sky. And I did have a little bit more of this. Um, and then I just don't know where it's gone. And then I had this much of my Another Crafty Girl Strong Sock in deep blue sea so it is a great shawl for using up your yarn i mean and it would have not been a big deal if i if i would have not had enough of the one to do the bind off like if i had added the chevrons like you could easily add in another color like i had some brown fingering weight yarn on like to the side because i thought it would kind of go um if i needed to substitute in for any color because i mean you can see like you could substitute at any point for any one color and it would be beautiful So then I also finished my Musselboro hat by Isolde Teague. And this was knit right all the wool ends, all the time. Oh, this was really enjoyable to knit. So this is Unique Yarns, in U, so U-N-E-E-K. They have this long color sh changing self stripe, right? It's not that long, but I mean, each stripe and really each stripe is only two inches or two rows, but I made the extra large size. My gauge was like seven ish stitches an inch, seven ish stitches. I think if I measured it now, it would actually be more like six or six and a half, but I'm not going to do that. Um, and so you knit, right? You knit this magical thing. I did knit mine on zeros because I have knit another one of these that I knit, I think on like ones or something. And I am a super loose knitter, y'all. Like super loose. And it was very, like it was just a little bit too flaccid. And even this one is really soft. It's not at all. But it is super cute. And so you can go either way. You can have an inside or an outside. If you like a beanie, you can roll it up and have extra ear coverage, right? It's just super cute. So it's a great hat to gift uh, because, you know, it's like, 
think it comes five or six sizes, six or seven gauges. Um, and you start off by doing the top and so you don't have to know your gauge. You wanna pick a needle, uh, but you don't need to know your gauge. You can knit for a while and then measure your gauge and then determine how big you're gonna make it. And it was just, I'm not gonna, it was super pleasant just to knit it. Like it was just nice. Being able to knit fingering weight yarn, which is a favorite, but not have to worry about making it tight enough gauge for like a sock is just delicious. You just knit around and around and around. This was one skein, I think technically, like it may not be as deep as is indicated in the pattern because I think for the, for the larger sizes, she wants you to have a little bit more than one skein, but you could like throw a scrap in for the inside or like just make a big stripe somewhere. Um, yeah. It's not for me, unfortunately, it's for the teen. They better be wearing this hat a lot <laughs> or I'm gonna steal it. <laughs> It might be too warm for all these wools, but we'll try for a minute. Um, so yeah, I am very pleased with it. So pleased, in fact, I have a few more that I've cast on. <laughs> it's true. I also though finished a test knit for Shana Lines Designs, and these are her split decision mitts. I think the pattern has come out, if I'm not mistaken. If it's not out now, it's gonna be out in like 10 seconds. And so these use DK wool. You can use any number of colors. They're fun. You knit this stripey part, um, like your cast on is here and you're knitting this way, uh, but it's just a rectangle. And then you pick it up, you pick up this and you're knitting these, like you're applying this to this. So there's like enough of a technique that keeps it engaging, but you can also just, it's still pretty chill. Like once you figure out what you're doing, you can pretty much just groove and watch television or whatever. Um, and they're super cute. Garter stitch is one of my favorite things for mitts <clears throat> because it is warmer than stockinette and you don't have to worry about, again, knitting at a tight enough gauge to make it durable and warm, especially if you use a woolen spun yarn or a non-superwash yarn, you're gonna get a little extra warmth out of it and just super cute. You could use you could use fingering weight held double though if you wanted to use up scraps or you had a special color uh, combination that you wanted to play with. Any number of stripes, any number, like whatever. Just like you just play. It's a recipe, and then you just play. Oh, I forgot. I also finished my bracelet. <laughs> so my little weaving project I was telling you about. I was doing my little weaving project on my um. What's that called? Like a snap frame for embroidery or whatever. I finished it. Isn't it cute? I'm super pleased with that. I feel like it's very cool. Very cool. Look how cool I am. Do you not sense how cool I am? Very cool. Um, <laughs> so I just used five strands of like a, is it hemp? I think it was hemp. Five strands of a hemp for the warp and then just used sock yarn and a little bit of embroidery floss uh, to weave for the weft. And I'm very pleased with how it turned out. I made like a little sliding knot so I can take it on and off if I want to. Um, did a little five string braid from the edge of the weaving to the plate. You know, like it was just fun. A little friendship bracelet for myself. And I have another one that I want to start immediately that I have uh, sourced a little scrap of neon coral yarn for that I'm very excited about. So yeah, there's that. And then I think that's, yes, okay, that is all the finished objects. But I also cast off, <laughs> because the muscle bar, muscle bar, Every time I look it up, I swear I care enough to look it up, but my brain just can't hold on to it. I think it's Musselboro. Um, so I started one with some hand spun. This is hand spun I did a couple of years ago with hip strings, their base 12 spin along. And so I'm doing one of these. So I just cast like, 
And so this will go in my like charity pile, like my um, wool.org charity knitting. Um, Cause they take non super wash. I think they might ask for dark colors, but sorry. <laughs> um, so it's just super fun, cute thing to do. And then I also cast on one cause I was just crazy. Actually what I did is I cast on one with this nomadic self sprite striping. And I apologize. I don't know the colorway cause I started socks on it like a million years ago and then lost the ball, but didn't, I didn't actually start the socks. I just thought I was going to start them, you know, so you wind it up and then the ball band goes missing. Uh, but she does great. She has a great acidic green. And with this like fun, like bright aqua combination is so good. Um, so I cast on this one and I was really, I don't know, we talked about a while ago, I think that I was like thinking about trying to do some sort of like helical knitting or like some sort of way to do um, self striping, but make the stripes fatter. Cause of course this is sock yarn. It's designed to be, and I think this one is actually even sport weight. I don't, I don't know what weight it is. I think it's sport weight though. It is sport weight. Um, but so it's designed, designed to be like a 56 stitch, you know, circumference, whereas in the hat, it's like 120. Um, so they're, they're skinnier. And so I was kind of playing with, you can see I split my skein up. I was kind of playing with alternating the skeins, skeins to see like if I could, I mean, I knew the stripe wouldn't be perfect. I knew there would be like kind of like a blippy area, but so I tried that. I tried, like I tried doing it every other row. I tried to do like the full stripe of one color and then the full stripe of the other. And then like kind of play with like how to get back to where I was. It just really was feeling more fiddly than I wanted in my experience. So I decided, no, I just ripped it back and I'm just doing it as it comes. And to be honest with you, I also kind of like this in a skinnier stripe. Like I don't dislike it in the fatter stripe, but as I was looking at it, I was like, this doesn't feel worth this amount of bother to me. Um, cause I actually do like the way the skinny stripe looks. So some of the stripes are only one, uh, one row. Some of them are two in, in most of them are just like two in places, one in places, but I like it. It's super fun. And so I'm knitting this one on us ones, which is what? 2.25 millimeter. Yeah. 2.25. I knit this on zeros, US, US zeros, 2.0 millimeter. And then this one, which is like, who knows what gauge this or what yarn this, this is DK. And like, who knows? I think these are like fours or something. They're threes, 3.25 millimeters. But again, I'm a super loose knitter. I always go down to at least two needle sizes if I'm trying to get the gauge of a pattern. I just realized like I needed to have something that was like, I was like, I had socks, but I just wasn't picking them up because again, they do have like a different level of attention. I need to pay because of the tensioning. Um, and so I realized when I actually put this next to my, my, cause originally I had it as like my car knitting and it was not getting done. And then I brought it in one night and just did it as I was watching TV. I was like, Oh, this is what I need. I need like loose knitting stocking it for miles, no thinking at all. Um, which is different for me than doing a sock. Like it's, I mean, sock knitting is, is no longer challenging for me in terms of like, Oh no, I have to turn a heel. Like that's not the issue. It's just the tensioning, the gauge that needs to be is, is a little bit like, and again, like I don't, I can't knit on those little nine inch cirques. I do want to try to give it another try one day, but not today. Um, and so there's always stopping points, right? Like when I'm knitting socks on double points, I have three chances to put it down. Like each time I finish a needle, I could put it down and look at a phone or, you know, or even if I'm on magic loop, there's still like twice in a row that I could put it down versus this, this hat, um, on 16 inches. Like once I get past the increases or whatever, like theoretically, I just am not going to put, I mean, I'm still going to put it down. <laughs> 
but there's less of like a clear place that I'm going to stop and have a chance to pick up a phone or do something or just sit, you know? Um, and not that there's anything wrong with that. Like, don't get me wrong. I'm not like, if you just want to sit, just sit, just sit. But I do feel better when I'm, when I am like theoretically accomplishing something when I'm sitting. And so, um, and also I just don't want to be on my phone as much. Not that there's anything wrong with being on your phone. But when I get on the phone, I tend to like accidentally buy things, which I don't want to do. <laughs> you know, right. And so then, so that's what's going on. And then I also passed on, oh, I forgot to tell you. I did finish my little rabbit, right? I did, and I forgot to tell you again, almost. I finished my little rabbit um, and then I, I gave it to my mama. So I forgot to show it to you. Okay. Okay. I'll just put in the pictures here because that's better than me trying to hold the phone up for you. I know. I know. I'll put them in here. So that's the little rabbit from Dot Pebbles Knits, right? Yes. Um, and she has a bajillion uh, little doodads. Like she's got... I don't know if you can see my little frog. There's frog and toad, which are a, a pattern, the big guys. And there's a little guy in the middle. Um, she does great little patterns, but they are all seamed. And that's not my favorite. <laughs> Did you see that? Um, oh, what is her name? Oh, it's a C. It's a C. C? Like, that's going to be enough for the in for Instagram to tell me what she who she is. Well, that's how I can tell, maybe. Um, okay, so here's my other little frog I was talking about from Top Pebbles, right? So cute. Um, but then Cynthia Valet, she is doing a new, um, well, not, I guess there's pre-orders for a book that she's doing, right? It's called Moochie and Friends. It's with Lane Publishing. I know that's not how you say it, but whatever. L-A-I-N-E. Um, and she does cute things. So she is, she did my little mole that's back there. She does a sweet little turtle. She's got a cute, super cute bear. Um, but this new collection has sheep, it has a moose, it has pigs, it has a raccoon, it has a highland coo, it has a wolf, I think? I think he's a wolf. Anyway, it's so stinking charming. You can find out more information on um, Cynthia, not sponsored, nothing is sponsored, y'all. Cynthia's, <laughs> Cynthia's um, web, or Instagram, I'm sure her website, I don't know what that is. Um, but her her Instagram handle is from Cynthia. It's C I N T H I A, and they are just. Is there a donkey? There's a donkey. There's lots of clothes. There's overalls. There's it's just madness, and so I'm excited. I'm not getting the hard copy, but I am gonna get the. Um, I've decided. I am gonna. <laughs> I am gonna purchase the um, like the ebook version. And her toys are so enjoyable to knit. They're all in the round. She's got great instructions, great little clothing details, just cute as can be, right? Cute as can be. Uh, speaking of which, I am also knitting Susan B. Anderson, who is another person who does amazing toy patterns. Um, I'm doing her good bear. I'm making her good bear. And this pattern is even printed so that, or is formatted so that you can make it into like a little book, which I didn't do because I like to print on both sides of my paper. But um, very cute and nice that you can fold it in half and see easily what you're doing. But another toy designer who does great in the round, great clear instructions. Like I just, um, I just cast this guy on. This is in Barrett Wool's Wisconsin Woolens. And so this is um, so far just what, is like as the pattern, what did the cross stitchers say? As written, as written, the colors are as written. Um, and so I've just got 
his legs done and his little body started. But like, I just, she just had me do some pearl bumps for its tail. Like she tells you where things are gonna get picked up. And so very clear directions. You can tell by looking at folks' projects that it's easy, well, that it is reasonable to get consistent results. Um, and the same thing with Cynthia's toys. Great, super fun, enjoyable. So yeah, he'll be this color and this color. Oh, so cute. And then that's all, right? Yeah, that's all. That was a lot. <laughs> oh my goodness. Did you see, I just saw a thing the other day that there's not, it's for the Eastern folks. Or maybe, I don't know. I shouldn't even say, cause I don't know where time zone that person was in. But for this person that's posted, uh, it will, sun will not set before 7 p.m. until September 15th. And I mean, even if that's not where you're at, you're at, we're Northern Hemisphere, by the way. Um, uh, even if that's not where you're at, like you're close and boy. I, again, I'm a person who loves the darkness of winter. I love it. And then I get sunshine and I'm like, oh, that's right. My body actually wants some of that too. <laughs> so I both kind of get like a little bit mournful, like, but then also I get excited uh, because it is true. Like my body does clearly want some sunshine. I get excited to get my bike out again. Um, I get sad that it's harder to ride it than it was last. <laughs> like, oh my gosh, how do my muscles deteriorate so much over the winter? Come on, little bikey legs. Come on. Um, but it gets exciting. And so getting out for a little bit, a few more walks. Um, it's just, it's, 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 I'm very thankful. I'm very thankful uh, that I have the ability to do that and that this time of the year makes it uh, more rewarding to do so. So, yeah, we haven't started any seeds yet, but I do like have everything. I actually don't even have everything planned, but I mean, I've bought everything I'm going to buy. Oh my gosh, my friend, ah, my friend Maria hooked me up. I'm so excited. Um, the Wiley House does um, a seed, it's basically kind of like a seed exchange because they will get you the seeds, but then they want you to send back seeds that you gather from your plants for their next round. Um, but I got something called a 1500 year old cave bean and I'm so excited about it. What's it gonna be? I don't know. I'm pretty sure it's a variety they found in a cave that's at least 1500 years old. So I'm excited to see what that's gonna be like. <sighs> so yeah, that's gonna be fun, Gus. I haven't got my dahlias out, I'm a little bit afraid. I know, I, I think I can get them out and like start doing something because I, I saw somebody on Instagram was getting her dahlias out and like waking them up, which I need to learn more about. Um, I think you can kind of sort of like start them indoors, like almost like, not like you're forcing a bulb, but like, I think you can sort of get them going uh, because they don't like the cold ground as much. Um, but I don't know. And I'm kind of afraid to look at them because they've been in storage. And like, what if they're not happy? I'll be so I am really like living in like slight denial of this one. Like I'm scared. Oh, what if they didn't store well? I loved my dahlias so much last year that I'm really like hoping that they, um, that they overwintered okay. That I didn't do something wrong in their storing. Please dahlias, be happy. Um, but yeah, so I haven't, I haven't started anything yet. It's a little bit early for us, even though we've had like a lot of warm weather. Um, I'm trying not to get seduced trying not but um but yeah so that'll be happening soon we'll see anyway i hope you can find some sunshine i hope you can dose up on some vitamin d if you're my northern hemispheres if you're my southern hemispheres oh my gosh it's gonna be winter soon are you excited just relish it just oh so exciting so exciting guys um, I'm getting a little bit of a clothing sewing bug again. Um, I'm going to try to replicate some pants that I love. I randomly found some old Navy pants that I love. 
Um, so I'm going to try to like figure out how to, that's been on my, pl my, my plate up here for a while. Um, trying to figure that out or that's not true. Getting ready to figure that out. Like how to make a pattern from an existing piece of clothes. I just, oh, so much good stuff. Helen's closet just released a cute, uh, quilted coat pattern. Um, which of course moon and broad has an amazing one. And like, there's so many good ones out there. Um, yeah. So liberated just released a t-shirt pattern, which I did test. sew for them, um, which was a very pleasant experience. I've been wearing my moon and broad moon and broad Tarly t-shirts quite a bit. I love them. Um, that's a t-shirt pattern that has this seam down the back, which is, like such a small thing, but makes them fit so nicely. It's wonderful. I'm just saying. So I don't know. I'm feeling like I could get a little bit of a bug. Um, I showed you that denim or that canvas that's on the bottom of those Ray Ritchie bags. And I originally bought that for pants for myself. <laughs> but then it looks so cute with the fabric. Uh, but so like I want to make some of these pants with that. They're like ultra high waisted. Like they go. I have a B belly. And so they go like on my uppermost belly, like almost, there's just like a couple inches from my bra. And I love them so much. They're seven ace link, but basically it just looks like your pants are too short, which I find amusing. I mean, it look, doesn't look like that on fancy people, but on me, it just looks like my pants are too short. So I was hiking with my friend. I was hiking with my friend who does not watch this podcast. Um, she was like, did you make those pants? And I was like, no, I didn't make these. I love them. And I like, like hike, of course, you have to instantly... If it's a skirt, you have to show that there's pa there's pockets. Uh, if they're high-waisted, you have to instantly hike your shirt up to show how high-waisted they are. I was like, I love them. They're so high-waisted. She's like, oh, I love pants like that. I don't even care if I have to pull them up and they make them look like they're too short. And I was like, <laughs> they're supposed to be that way. <laughs> but it doesn't look like that on me. <laughs> it just looks like my pants are too short. But that's a lie because I have very short legs and my pants are never too short. So I've got like a sewing bug, you know, I'm thinking maybe I'm going to start to complete some things that have been like languishing um, and that'll help me feel, you know, again, that accomplishment helps you feel like that momentum feels better than just like work. Um, for me, it does anyway. So yeah, let me find some vitamin D. I hope you find some high-waisted pants that really fit you, that feel so good. Even if your friends think they look too short. I hope your dog doesn't constantly pester you to let you let him outside so that he can chase some things. I think our groundhog is back because there's been a couple of really banana pants runs out the door. Gus. Just saying. Anyway, we'll talk soon and I'll see you next time. Bye.